The stomach makes several different types of digestive juices to digest the different types of food that we get in our stomach. And one of the cells that produces one type of digestive juice is called a parietal cell. You can see in this picture, parietal cells lie in these gastric glands, which lie in gastric pits, these spaces that you see in the epithelium right here. And then as gastric glands produce their digestive juices, they're released into the stomach lumen and can go out and mingle with the food that you've just eaten to break it down. Before I move into the specific mechanism of parietal cells, I'd like to review this equation. And this equation you may have seen before, it's very common to see throughout the body, including in the kidneys and in the lungs, and we also see it here in parietal cells. And it states, if you have carbon dioxide, which is a common metabolic waste product, and water, also very common in the body, they combine to make carbonic acid, H2CO3. H2CO3 can then dissociate into hydrogen ion, H+, and bicarbonate ion, HCO3-. Sometimes, depending on where you are in the body, you may have an enzyme that helps you with this step, turning carbon dioxide and water into carbonic acid. And that enzyme is called carbonic anhydrase. It's not necessary for you to move from carbon dioxide and water to carbonic acid, but it will help the reaction to uh, move more quickly. So if we go and look at our parietal cell, this big blue splotch is your parietal cell. And on the other side, bordering the parietal cell, you can see other cells such as chief cells over here. The orange area is your stomach lumen, the open space in your stomach. This light blue area is your interstitial fluid. And then we also have a blood capillary lining the area. When we go back and look at our parietal cell, you can see we bring in CO2. Now carbon dioxide can freely diffuse across that plasma membrane and it is, as I said, very common in the body. So you have plenty of CO2 being made, it diffuses into the cell, and it combines with water to make carbonic acid. And you'll see that in parietal cells you do have that helpful enzyme, carbonic anhydrase, to help that reaction move more quickly. Carbonic acid then dissociates into hydrogen ions and bicarbonate ions. The hydrogen ions are actively transported out of the parietal cell on the apical membrane into the stomach lumen. And this is done by using an ATPase. So you're using ATP as your energy source to actively push hydrogen into the stomach lumen. So no matter how much hydrogen is already in the stomach lumen, you can always push more in there. It doesn't matter what the concentration is. In exchange for hydrogen moving out into the stomach lumen, you bring in potassium. So this is a hydrogen potassium ATPase pump. The potassium comes into the parietal cell, but you can see it just moves right back out through this ion channel. So the potassium is more or less just recycled going in and out. The hydrogen ion remains in the stomach lumen, and you can see ultimately it will be the H part of our HCl, hydrochloric acid. If we return to go back and see what happened to our bicarbonate ion, the bicarbonate ion is also actively moved out of the cell, but this time it's on the basal lateral side. As, hydro uh, as bicarbonate ion is moved out, you have chloride ion that moves in. So you have your bicarbonate chloride antiporter. And in fact, you have so much bicarbonate ion moving out um, that especially after digesting a meal, the pH of the blood around your stomach is actually slightly higher than normal. You have a slightly more alkaline or basic pH to your blood. Bicarbonate ion is a very useful buffer in your body that's used to help regulate pH. So you want to reclaim as much of that bicarbonate ion as you can. And because you have so much bicarbonate moving in this direction, that's called the alkaline tide. So bicarbonate ion moves to the blood, and this antiporter, as that bicarbonate moves out, chloride moves into the parietal cell in exchange. Chloride moves all the way through the cell and exits on the apical side through this ion channel. And here's your chloride ion that's made it all the way into the stomach lumen. Now that chloride can combine with your hydrogen ion to form your hydrochloric acid. 
Hydrochloric acid's function in the stomach is to denature proteins. And as those protein, proteins are denatured and unfolded, other protein digesting enzymes will have an easier time cleaving the peptide bonds that are holding those proteins together. It should also be noted that hydrochloric acid has an important job converting pepsinogen to pepsin. Chief cells are responsible for secreting pepsinogen, which is an inactive zymogen. It won't digest any protein in that form. Only when pepsinogen has had access to hydrochloric acid that it converts into its active form, pepsin. And pepsin can then cleave peptide bonds and start digesting proteins.